Welcome to this Debaco University video. We'll be looking at challenges estimating yield for indoor cannabis production. So a lot of growers ask, well, how does indoor compare to outdoor? What's gonna be my yield for an indoor? We're gonna go over some of the complexities while there's not just a quick short answer to that question. So first off, looking at this reference article here, which is where I've pulled the data from that you're gonna see. Uh, keep in mind that this article was kind of looking at it more from an investigation forensics kind of uh, angle, but it does provide some good information. So they first looked at, of course, you know, looking at gross revenue. Uh, when we're looking at gross revenue for our indoor grow operations, and they had four areas, uh, four rooms, I should say, that were under the investigation here. They were looking at the room numbers, the number of cycles, number of plants were grown, sales, this was in the Netherlands, so it is euros per kilogram, yield per plant in grams, yield per cycle, total yield, and gross revenue. The multiplication of the later uh, prices and the total yield in the table above reveals the gross revenue, as we see here, obtained in each growth room according to the court, with a correction for the assumed number of growth cycles in the first uh, growth room there. So again, there were some assumptions being made here. We can see the number of plants being as low as 266 and as high as over 5,000. The total gross revenue from all grow rooms together is an estimate to have been uh, over 5.5 million euros over the period from August 6, 2005 to March 2009. This is again what they were investigating as part of this article. So why is it again so hard to kind of like look in all these suspected grows here? Well, the judicial file on the case study also mentions revenue estimates provided by the grower based on its claims on yield, number of growth cycles, and prices paid by the buyers. So these are just more confounding uh, data points that make it difficult to pinpoint or get an exact number. Now, what's the total yield? Yeah, that's one thing. What's the number of plants? What are the, are the buyers willing to pay for it? So this is what causes that source of potential confusion. Now, if you're looking at what can we glean from this, what can we, information can we get, what data should we be collecting? Uh, so if the courts are collecting, it's probably a good idea for us to also be collecting it as a qualitative data gathering on cannabis cultivation activities. Focus on directly observable, observable and measurable data to be collected upon confiscation of cannabis plantations are strongly encouraged by police and judicial actors. So what information are they be collecting? What information should growers be keeping track of? And that should be the number of plants. It seems kind of obvious. The plant densities. So how big of an area? How many plants in per square meter per square foot? What's the surface being cultivated? It's the pot volume. It's been the container volume being grown in. The Lamp number, how many lights, the type and power of those lights, uh, the type and number of installations, I mean, the lights, but maybe the HVAC system, the cooling system, the heating system, equipment and fertilizer containers, as well as many other things. But these are just some key points growers should be keeping track of to ensure they have a successful operation. But with just the short list provided here, we can see the variability, and that's why it makes it very difficult to estimate yields, and especially yields over a long period of time, because some of them will, of these will have a lot of upfront cost, but then reduced reoccurring cost. So again, a little difficult there, but this just gives you an idea of some data presented in the information for this article that was presented in a court setting. 